Hi, this is Sapnil and we are here at VMworld at Las Vegas. We are not doing any casino stuff, we are just doing interviews here. And today we have again with us Wendy. And get, great to see you again. Great to see you as well. Yeah. And today we are the keynote and they're like cloud native world and you know, hybrid cloud. And um, there was multi-cloud. So it's like too much jumping between you know, virtual machine and containers, you know. So what is VMware's you know, strategy for containers? So VMware is helping customers deploy mm -hmm. containers in production. And um, that production environment requires um, you know, high availability, requires performance, requires um, a base foundation consisting of compute, networking, and storage, and um, obviously monitoring logging, which is part of my demo as well. And um, you know, it's really about supporting all those elements in the multi-cloud world. And you know, we're really looking at um, a scenario where customers uh, will or already are running containers, not only on-prem on vSphere, but also extending that to other public cloud scenarios as well, and then being able to do that in a production setting. Uh, now you have PKS, mm -hmm, right. and then VKE. VKE as well, right. And there's one more thing I'm forgetting. Vic, yeah, which is Vic. vSphere integrated containers. Yeah, so uh, can you talk about you know, how they're connected? and how they help customers with the, you know. Right, so they essentially address different ways that customers can consume containers. So with vSphere integrated containers, for example, it's part of vSphere. Mm -hmm. And we consider it as a, a feature almost of vSphere where a VI admin, for example, could easily bring up containers um, as part of their VMs. So it's super easy for them to use and uh, it's already included as part of the vSphere package. And it's a great way for VI admins to get started with containers if they're not familiar with it. Now, once they get to a stage where they need to have orchestration, that's where PKS can come in and help them um, you know, kind of scale the container deployment and use PKS with Kubernetes to orchestrate a, uh, a full-blown container environment. Um, but both options are still more or less managed by the customer. So PKS, for example, can run on vSphere and it can also run on GCP today. Um, but it's you know what we call self-managed, meaning that the customer has to deploy it, they install the Kubernetes clusters, and they manage the Kubernetes clusters themselves, regardless where it's running. Now with VKE, it's essentially designed for customers who just want to consume containers, meaning right. that they don't want to download the software, install it, and manage it, and operationalize it themselves. They want it as a service. So that's how you know, VKE is meeting that need for customers who want to go into an um, environment where they could just bring up some Kubernetes clusters quickly. And when they're done, you know, they get out and they don't have to worry about you know, all the cluster management, infrastructure management types of uh, needs. And they just pretty much just consume it. So it addresses yeah. different types of needs out there. And uh, you know, what we found is that customers um, are potentially looking at all three scenarios where you know, they may start with vSphere, with VIC, you know, vSphere integrated containers, then they will you know, upgrade to PKS, um, and those are more or less for the self-managed scenarios, and they may have a global deployment that they want to roll out, and they don't have, um, for example, presence in some of the regions that they're in, and it's a great way to use VKE to sort of complement that scenario. But, um, both PKS and Vic are running standard Kubernetes uh, API and vanilla upstream Kubernetes. So, uh, from a developer perspective, it's the same set of APIs. How how does you know the VMware's partnership with AWS going to help? Because AWS is also embracing Kubernetes. Almost everybody is embracing Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, we work with AWS. Um, you know, we are definitely uh, so VKE runs on AWS, right? And uh, PKS already has the AWS CPI built in. It's part of Bosch. Uh, it hasn't been turned on yet, so that's coming in the, in the next release. And uh, we're giving customers options in terms of um, how they want to deploy Kubernetes on public cloud. So um, you know, with PKS running on AWS uh, in the next uh, release and uh, VKE running on AWS today, um, it really depends on the consumption model, if they want to manage it or if they rather have a fully managed model. Um, so again, it's, um, it's a different way of consuming containers and we're just giving our customers options in terms of you know, how they want to choose to, to do so. Um, and and is, 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 are these separate products or you, know, you get one package and you can just move between anything you want? Or? They're separate products. 
Um, so customers can choose that way. It's like, um, you know, if they want to choose PKS, they could buy PKS. And if they want to buy VKE, they could buy VKE. Now, VKE uh, is a SaaS-based service, as I mentioned earlier. So um, it's something that, you know, the developers or the operators can log in to the VM or cloud services portal and uh, essentially pay with a credit card. Mm -hmm. So uh, they don't need to contact a salesperson. Um, and uh, they could just quickly go online, you know, enter a credit card number, and it's pay-as-you-go model, essentially. They pay for what they use, and when they're done, uh, it stops. And One more thing that we are seeing these days as uh, the evolution is serverless. Yeah. So yeah. how does it fit into your... Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, we have OpenFast. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Ellis is part of our open source office, and, um, you know, he's driving that community and, and leading that initiative. And uh, we also have this patch, uh, which is a different serverless model. It's not the same as OpenFast. Um, so that was just something that we open sourced um, just a few months ago. Um, and then we're working uh, with uh, Pivotal uh, around the cloud native uh, initiative as well. So that was just announced uh, a couple months ago at Google Next. And uh, again, I mean, they're solving different problems in a serverless space. So um, it's something that you know, our, all of our developers involved in that space are actively engaged in, and uh, we're working with the community on a pretty broad basis across all three initiatives. So I think there will be a little bit more time that's required to um, probably take a look at some very specific use cases for customers to actually deploy in a production environment. But uh, I think that work is well underway. From, from VMware's perspective, you know, uh, you have, you know, dominance in the virtualization space, you trigger the revolution, and then containers are coming up. So will there be a kind of correlationship or consolidation of where there will be future, you know, there will be two separate? Uh, what is the overall direction of, you know, the coexistence of virtual virtual machines versus, versus containers? Yeah, so what we're seeing is that containers are landing in VMs. Mm -hmm. So customers are using the VMs to... Uh, essentially provide the isolation uh, that, that they're looking for, but also they have a you know, pretty large business process, operational process built with um, their VM infrastructure, and uh, they want to be able to take advantage of that, right? And you know, they have a combination of different types of workloads, um, you know, traditional applications as well as microservices coming, and they're really looking for that single platform to deliver both, to enable you know, both applications and be able to operationalize it um, you know, using a single platform as well. So I think that um, you know, for the most part, I think you know, that's what uh, we're going to see more and more customers uh, adopt the model. So you know, we're very upbeat about helping our customers um, deliver that you know, single unified platform model for both our monolith and our microservices. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap up, last time we talked about your personal journey. Anything new you added to the work that you're doing? Yes, uh, I, I've signed up for uh, additional um, volunteer opportunities with uh, Stanford. So um, looking forward to um, talking to the, uh, the team at Stanford to uh, land my next uh, volunteer uh, activity. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, we will. I'll keep an eye on what the work you're doing there. And I have been here a lot. I, this morning I talked to Minnie. Mm -hmm. And she's doing an amazing job in, in case of, you know, the, helping out people with disabilities. So uh, I think, uh, and I love to explore these personal stories because you don't know the kind of amazing work everybody is doing. Yeah, absolutely. The, the VMware Foundation is just an amazing organization right. and there's so much that they do with, you know, thousands of employees who are involved with different types of charities. It's really an amazing, amazing uh, initiative. Anyway, thank you for your time today, and hopefully we'll see thank you again you. at the next conference, maybe in a week or so, who knows. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.